Welcome to the swamp, the giant that the head ball coach awakened, one that thrived in urban renewal, and now one where only the Gators get out alive. What a game and what potential drama we have in store. You've seen this script before. Top 10 team goes into a cauldron of emotion on the road and just hopes to be able to get out and tell about it. As we'll see the number eight team in the country, the Texas A&M Aggies, taking on another SEC rival, the Florida Gators. 48 Sports College Football, Reese Davis with you alongside David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. And guys, can't wait to get this one started. The Gators will get us underway with the opening kickoff. On the move from inside is five. Not a lot of space to be found. Good hustle by the coverage team, and they stop him at the 21. So the Florida Gators offense takes the field. Here he comes, and obviously defense is always going to be aware of a quarterback, but boy, he finds a way to put defenses on their heels all the time, David. I mean, what can't he do? He's got the weapons, he's got the confidence, he's got the experience. Jesse, these kind of guys are so hard to defend. You're right. They better be able to find a way to get pressure on him, because if they don't, this is going to be a long day. In a competitive conference like the SEC, you just can't afford to start 0-1 if you want to chase a championship. Really important to get off to a good start. No doubt, in the SEC, you've got to set the tone early. It's all about creating momentum out of the gate. Both of these teams had this game circled all offseason, David. They know what's riding on the line. Here. There's so much riding on the line. Who gets to Atlanta down the road? Uh, bragging rights, recruiting rights, all this stuff. Once you get in conference play, it means a lot every single week. They pick up the first down on the drag route. I know that seems like a simple route, but it's actually a lot more complex than what it looks like because that route changes based on whether it's man or zone. If it's man coverage, he's flying across the field. If it's zone, he's got to sit down over the ball in a soft spot, giving his quarterback a place to go with it. Nice job with those guys being on the same page there. Six-yard pickup on first down. Leaves him with second and four. Dropping back, it's Mertz. He tosses one high and deep down the left side. And that's going to be incomplete. Going for broke on second down. The third down's coming up. That's an example of the offensive coordinator trying to be aggressive and trying to take a shot. Now, the offense isn't able to click on that play, but moving ahead in the second half, it's important they continue to dial up these big plays. You want to stay aggressive, and you want to keep testing the second. That pass is well off target. He got hit as he was trying to throw, and they can't convert on third down. The offense stays on the field. Opening drive still in their own territory. They'll go for it on fourth down. And that one falls incomplete. A huge stand by the defense. The Aggies' offense has the ball for the first time. And a big key as this game unfolds is just how aggressive will he be throwing the football at a lockdown corner like that. Yeah, and when you're an elite quarterback, you think you can do whatever you want to do, and you think you can make the right decisions. I'm interested to see how much they'll test that cornerback on the other side. You know, there's a saying, there's no defense for a perfect pass, but he's got to be extra careful and sharp when he's throwing that guy's way. This crowd going to try to make life miserable for these guys. They'll give it to the back through behind his pad and he's brought down after a nice game and that's all you want right you want that first down uh, understand the situation understand i gotta get north and south get a first down get a new set of downs going up top on first down quick strike complete didn't pick up a lot there moved it forward just a few the crowd getting behind this defense as they try to get a stop in the red zone. They'll run it out of the shotgun. Our defense is about firing off, hitting off these guys and staying in the gaps. Everybody knowing where they're supposed to be. You can tell the defense everyone was right where they're supposed to be, nowhere to run. With the catch, it's Allen. Good tackle there to stop him short of the first down. It'll bring up a big decision. Now on fourth down, they'll try to come away with three. No, oh, no good. Kicker couldn't quite get it through, and the scoreboard remains the same. The Gators 
sending the offense back to work. There have been a couple of missed opportunities for these offenses in the last couple of drives, Jesse. And I think for this offense here, it'd be nice to hit an explosive play, be aggressive, and really pay off your defense's effort that last drive. And instead of having to move the ball down the field consistently and then getting stopped on fourth downs, you're right. Create some of those explosives. Take those deep shots. Make those big plays. Finds his big tight end. And they reacted well to the completion, but it was too late to keep them from getting the first down. And this set of downs gets started from the 33, first and 10. Touch pass on the jet sweep. Pass the first down marker and still running. And he's brought down after a nice game. Mr. Two Bits would be proud. The Gators standing up and hollering for a first down. Now, how does that cheer go? Well, first you have to have the yellow shirt and the striped tie and go two bits, four bits, six bits, a dollar, all for the Gators. Stand up and holler. And that incomplete pass caused by the big hit on first down, second down coming. Well, that looked like it was going to be a completion, but how about the defender making the hit and forcing the incompletion? Now the play fake. They're trying to get to it. Hits him in stride at the 10. He's brought down, but he's got him inside the 10. First and goal from the 8. Well, a play like that's going to force the defense to second guess whether they want to play man-to-man -man coverage against guys with speed like that. One-on-one -on -one of the perimeter, you run the go route, quarterback puts a ton of air under it, and they come up with a huge play. They'll run it on first and goal. He works his way all the way down to the three, and the defense is reeling. The counterplay is a great play to mix in with the base concepts. Obviously, everybody flies to the football, flies to the football, bang. Now you pull a guy, you go backside, give him a little counter, keep the defense off balance. Trying to break the plane on second and goal. They get him on the ground at the three-yard line, but this defense is taking some punches. And with the stuff there, Jesse, on second down, this little third to mid-range, you got two downs. What are you thinking here? Maybe getting your quarterback out on the perimeter and giving him a run-pass option. See if you can get the defense in a bind. Well, they've gotten it down to the three, but now it's third and goal. Looking for a man. It's Mertz. And the quarterback is knocked down back at the 13. And they decide to trot out the kicker. Man, that's just kind of frustrating for an offense. You move the ball all the way down the field. You got an opportunity on third down, and you can't protect your quarterback. You get the sack, and now it's probably field goal time if you make a field goal. out there ready to boot it away after putting up a field goal let's see what the defense can do and they thought about a return then thought better of it they'll bring it out to the 25 Texas A&M has it back in the offense ready to go to work we talk about settling for points but sometimes when you have to settle for nothing David it can be demoralizing yeah and it can definitely be frustrating and I think it leads you to say maybe I go for it more but Jesse I think this offense just needs to put another drive together and just finish strong. Yeah, and, and be a little bit less predictable, too, especially as they get closer and closer down to the end zone. As they get set to snap at time, winding down here in the quarter. Looking for space. It's Owens. And after the tackle, we are headed to the end of the first quarter. We've come to the end of the quarter, and it's Florida on top. We've put one in the books. Let's have a look at our game summary. Heading in the opposite directions now as we crank it up in the second. We've got this third down play to open the quarter. Go. 
They'll try to pick up the first through the air. And it's incomplete on third down. Third and short like that on your own side of the field, you're just looking for a quick hitter. You're trying to get the ball out of your hand quickly, but the timing completely off there for the offense, and the ball falls incomplete. He gets it up to the 34-yard line before he stopped, and that's where the offense will set up shot. Florida has the ball back, and here comes the offense. Always good to get points on a drive, David, but chip shot field goals can leave you a little empty. And I think it's great to get points, but the great teams get touchdowns in the red area. you got to get out there this time and execute a little better on this drive. You're absolutely right, David. Generally, the best red zone offenses are the ones that run the ball the best. So, let's see if they can be a little bit more physical on this drive. Now a first down from the 45-yard line. Use the play fake. Now to throw. A strong tackle and wrap up from the junior. They were able to make the completion, but he had to pick his way for just a little bit. Needed a little more help to spring him for some yardage. Yeah, if you're going to have success when you throw it outside like that, you're going to need some more blocking and better blocking downfield. Give the defense credit, though. They were able to rally and made a tackle. A full dive to hold that one in. Just when you thought that ball was out of reach, nothing appeared to be out of his reach there. Yeah, he says just throw it up and I'll go get it. To track the ball all the way down the field and dive and lay out with that body control, that is a special catch. This first half of offense won't go on the highlight reel so far, but starting to get things moving, it's first and ten. They'll try to get it in with the run. That play just never had a chance. They knock him down for a loss of five. So you get stuffed on first down, and now you have the offensive coordinator thinking a little bit. Yeah, we're probably going to have to throw it now in this second play, but what are we going to see defensively? Now that they know we're throwing, might they blitz us? Do I have to leave more guys in to block? There's a real cat-and-mouse game going on right now between these two coaching staffs. Defense rolls up deep in its own end on that last play. Now a second and long coming. Back to pass. It's Mertz. Swings it out to the flat. And he was able to run through one tackle, but still only a modest gain. You know, sometimes even a short game like that can be used to set up something bigger later on. No doubt, Reese. They can pump that and take a shot down the field. And don't worry, they're going to go back to that same play because they know this guy with the ball in his hands is dangerous. He makes one guy miss. He can take it to the house. Third and goal coming up here. From the gun, wants to pass. Going for six. And swatted down by the defense to stop the scoring opportunity. And they'll send the field goal team back out for the second time tonight. It's good. He'll bring it back from inside his five. And the return man has no place to run, no place to hide, and a place to be tapped. Texas A&M has it back, and we say howdy to the Aggie offense again. Boy, three and out last time, David. They'd like to be more productive this time. Fires in the traffic, picked off. And he's going to score on the interception. Touchdown, Florida. The DB saw it. He thought, don't drop it, don't drop it. Then thought, don't get caught, don't get caught. And he didn't. The pick six. Right, and these guys can play offense, too. Now, look at this. I show you I can be a wide receiver. Coach might split him out at wide receiver next week after making that big play. But defense, great job making the interception. And you're right, doing something with it. Don't just slide down. Don't be content. Take that thing all the way back, Robin. Getting set for the point after. And with the extra point, they push the lead out a little further. 
We check in with Kevin Connors. What's going on, Kevin? All right, guys, want to update you on a game that went final moments ago. Tulane notched a victory in enemy territory. And though it wasn't a dominant win, I'd argue any win away from New Orleans is worth its weight in gold to the Green Wave. 60 minutes of football and a convincing outcome, and certainly a game with implications far beyond just the standings, fellas. And Kevin Connors keeping an eye on everything all over the country. Sounds like they had a good one there. Got the first down. Looking for more. And they'll finally get him down after a terrific pickup. They'll snap this one from the 32. It's first down. Nothing the Aggies love more than saying howdy with a strong running game. Yeah, how do you like... Oh, look out! There he goes! A huge gain on that one before he ran out of bounds, and he has the first down. Well, there's the offense trying to take advantage of this running back speed. I like the call. Hand off to the left, to the outside. Put him in space and let him go to work. On first and ten from the 38. He's going to pass. Caught over the middle. It's Miller. And he laid the lumber to stop him from getting the first down. I'll say this, man. In college football, you see a lot of bad tackling. You didn't see it right there. That was an awesome job. First off, being there at the point of attack, once the tight end made the catch, there was no doubt he was going down. Great job for him to have. Caught in the backfield. It's Allen. And he goes out of bounds after a nice pickup on that one. I like the slot receiver because he gives his quarterback a good option working the middle of the field. He's a nice weapon in this offense. Better find the ear plugged. Here comes the noise. Backing this defense on third down. Just threw that one away to avoid disaster. Yeah, and third and short, they choose not to run, throw the football, and I think a lot of that has to do with they know they're in field goal range. They can take the three points on the board. And for the second time tonight, they'll trot out the field goal kicker. And he'll have to find the line and generate some power. A 46-yarder from the left. It's good. There is a flag down on the play. Now, if this is on the defense, the offense will have to decide whether to take the points off the board. You must protect the kicker when he's in a defenseless position like that. That penalty is going to give the offense a first down. The offense comes back out with a new set of downs after the penalty. Got it in the middle. It's Miller. That completion will take it close to the five-yard line. They'll mark it at the six. Operating in the red zone here on second down. He's looking to throw. Makes the catch. They will score. Touchdown, Aggie. And I tell you what, that passing touchdown, man, that should spark this whole team. Like, the comeback is more than on now. Like, they got the touchdown. They cut into the lead. You, you want to get a stop and go into the half, get all the juices, all the excitement, and be like, listen, the passing game's rolling. We got this. The comeback's in full effect. He'll try to tack on one more. And it's up and good as they draw just a touch closer. A 70-yard touchdown drive. And they get it into the end zone with a six-yard touchdown pass. And he passes on the touchback. Here he comes. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. The Gators sending the offense back to work. They've got some time to work with here, Jesse, and if they get a first down, they might really get aggressive. I'd be aggressive right out of the gate. I'd be throwing for a first down. If I get it, then it's pedal to the metal. I'm in that two-minute mode to try to score a touchdown or get a field goal. But I do think this is a situation where you also have to understand that I have the lead going into a half. I've got the momentum, so don't do anything stupid here. Didn't connect last time. Let's see if they throw it again on second down. To throw, it smirks. Floats it out in space. Shakes off the defender. And he is going to lose yardage. Nowhere to run as he is forced out of bounds. This defense has kept them backed up. Now one more stop and they can get off the field on third and long. Giving him his pads. 
ripped off a huge chunk play on that one as he gets the first down before he steps out of bounds. This defense really needs to be careful, and they have to play with great eye discipline, understanding where the football is at all times. Moving forward, they have got to know if this guy has the ball, because he is dangerous in space. The Gators will have it first and ten. He's looking to throw it, trying to get to it. And the defense is all over the quarterback, and down he goes. They'll tell you that somebody's always going to pop open, but it didn't happen in time before they got the sack. No, it did not. And you know what? I'm going to remember this. I'm going to remember zone defense. They didn't really have... And the ball is intercepted. Looking for more room. He's at the 40. At the 20. Touchdown, Texas A&M. What a great play by the defense and paying it off with the interception return. How oftentimes can you say that there is a safety who is the most dangerous guy on the field with the ball in his hands? Did you see that guy and his ability in the open field once he picked it off? There was nobody on offense even coming close to getting that guy down. What an athlete. Signals for a fair catch around the five-yard line and hauls it in. And he's backed up deep in his own territory. They'll use a timeout right before halftime. Maybe time for one or two more plays. Just enough time for one final play in this half. Back to throw. It's Mertz. He's going to fire deep. Grabs it at the 25 in stride. And he strides his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Gator. What great execution by this offense. It looked like you were about to go into the half trailing. Now, with this answer, this scoring drive, you got the lead. You got the momentum. Taking it into halftime. Nice job by this offense executing that last drive. They'll try to add another to their lead. And the extra point is good, and the lead is six. That kind of drive will boost your confidence. One play, hit the big pass, put a touchdown on the board. That's the end of the second quarter. That means it's time to join Kevin in our halftime update. All right, guys, you've been calling a magnificent game there in Gainesville so far. And what we've witnessed is a rarity these days in our sport. These defenses are taking matters into their own hands, putting points on the scoreboard, and effectively controlling the narrative of this game. Points off turnovers are kind of found money for teams, but at some point, these offenses are going to have to make some adjustments and carry their share of the load. And with that, let's send it back to our men in the swamp. Gators will kick it away first and will start the second half. Coming out with it, it's Moss. He's brought down at the 16, would have been much better off to take the touchback. Texas A&M has it back in the offense, ready to go to work. Tight game as we start the third quarter, and we'll see what type of adjustments they made at halftime. And getting the ball first here, I think, is such a big deal. Like I get the first chance to make a statement, to make the adjustments, to create some momentum for my squad right here in the third quarter. Yeah, I think it's so important for this offense to set the tone here early in the second half, to get a nice drive going, build that confidence, and get your defense ready to come on out, get a stop, and change the complexity of this game. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Listen to this crowd just shaking the girders of this place, trying to help their defense. Caught in the backfield, it's Muhammad. And he's not going to get there. The defense stands tall and makes the stop. The Aggies send out the punt team to kick it away. They allowed the completion, but this defense was swarming to keep them away from that first down line. Yeah, and you allow completions in those third down situations underneath the sticks, and you come up and rally, and everybody flies to the football. That's great execution by this defense. Florida has the ball back, and here comes the offense. 
They torched this defense with an explosive passing play for a score last time out. Let's see if they go right back at him. Quick pass on the jet motion. Pretty good effort on that one to work his way up to the 42. Well, and on these little push passes, timing is so important. You're trying to snap it right as he's getting a full head of steam. When he gets the ball, he's hitting the outside. Damn it. It puts the defense in such a difficult spot. You immediately have to be rotating when you see that motion. So everybody's got to communicate and kind of bump over. That's why offenses love to run. It just it makes the defense communicate and see if you can just get him out of the spot. The run game just has not been working for this offense all game long. We saw it on that last play as well. Just not getting enough push up front on the offensive line. They haven't been physical. Enough. They'll try to move the chains on the ground. They'll get the first down. It's spotted on the 49. And I don't care if I get it by 2, by 20, by 30, by 40. I just, I just want to get the first down, understanding the situation, understanding where the sticks are. Doesn't have to be sexy, but I got to make sure I get to that stick, get to the first down mark. Just a solid stop by this sophomore. And these defensive tackles just eat people. They swallow human beings when you get near them. They're so big, so strong. Hey, those guys, those running backs coming, they just need a mitt. They put one mitt on a running back, and he usually falls to the ground just because of their sheer mass and strength. And he got smacked just as he released the pass. It's incomplete. Well, this defense felt coming into the game that if he was going to try to throw from the pocket, they could get to him and affect his accuracy, and they did on that last play. They line up with some serious work to do if they want to convert this one. Looking to throw, it's Mertz. Oh, he's ready to take a shot. And trying to put points on the board on third down. Now they're staring at fourth down. The Gators will try to pin them back with the punt. That's why it's so important for this defense to win first and second down. You set up third and longs like that. You can show your exotic looks. You can get the pass rush going. Everybody on the back end expecting throw. And that's how you force incompletions and force fourth down. How in the world did the offense retain possession? Pulled and finds his man on the left. He's brought down solid. Pick up a little bit short of the first down. After trying the running game, let's see if they do it again on second down. The give is to Smith. They work their way to the 35-yard line. It's a gain of five. Ball is at the 35. It's first and ten. The give to the left side. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. They're trying to run the football. There's just nowhere to go for the ball carrier inside. He tried to bounce it to the outside. That linebacker way too fast. He met him there and forced the TFL. Got it in the middle. It's green. And he runs through one tackle and picks up a few. Decibels rising as the crowd gets behind this defense on third down. From the gun, wants to pass. Grabbed over the middle, it's green. And he's knocked down immediately, but not before he moves the chains. The Aggies are on the move. Love the way he didn't just run to a spot. He found the cushion in the zone and got himself open for the first down. Yeah, and you're taught to find that space. You know, don't run right into a zone defender who's sitting there looking at the quarterback and looking at you. So much creativity with routes now and being able to just have subtle moves one way, come back the other way. Nice job by the tight end finding that hole in the zone. The gift to the back. Pass the sticks, and he may get more. Defense makes a stop, but the chains move, and it's first and goal from the eight. New center downs right on the doorstep for this offense. They'll dial up the run on first and goal. Drag down at the six after a pickup of two. See if they can get it done on second and goal. The run up the middle trying to steamroll his way in. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. 
so loud it's rattling your fillings on third and goal. And the incomplete pass will bring up fourth down. Nice job by the defense. They're mixing up their look there. Third and long and field goal range. They go zone coverage. So everybody on the back end has the eye on the quarterback and they're able to break on the ball, force the incompletion. It is true as he puts three on the board. After putting up the field goal, they're set to kick it away. On the run from inside his own five. Not a lot of space to be found. Good hustle by the coverage team, and they stop him at the 21. The Gators sending the offense back to work. They'll have another opportunity to extend this lead after punting last time, David. And it's important to put that punt behind you. It's, it's over. Let it go. Get back to what you were doing that built this lead. Yeah, and defense, obviously, they won a few downs uh, that last drive. So you got to put them on their heels here. Maybe mix up a few personnel groupings and try to show them some pictures they haven't seen yet. Got room at the 35. He's run out of bounds, but not before. Turning in a big pickup and moving the sticks for a first down. Time winding down in the quarters. They come to the line. Receiver on the move gets the touch pass. He has the first and still on his feet. Hit the afterburners, kid. Touchdown, Florida. And they made it to the house when they found that six points waiting on him. Man, how hard is it to defend when you have a weapon like this at running back that can play wide receiver, you can design ways to get the football in his hand. Palmer, once you get it in his hands, he'll do the rest. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, and oftentimes those are easier throws for quarterbacks. And these running backs, they're just naturally so good when they have the football out in space. Their vision, their creativity, their ability to make people miss. And this guy showed you right there a difficult, difficult guy to stop now for this defense moving forward. And he made that extra point, the wet turf, no problem at all. We've come to the end of the quarter, and it's Florida on top. They've built a cushion. They've got a nice lead. Now the task is finish the deal as you take a look at the third quarter stats. One more period to go to see who can make the winning plays and come home with the victory. Kickoff team has the ball teed up, and they're about ready to go. Fielded in the end zone, it's Moss. That is a decision he will likely regret. He brings it out of the end zone, and he's knocked down at the 10. Texas A&M has it back, and we say howdy to the Aggie offense again. They had to settle for the chip shot field goal last time, Jesse. They'd love for this one to pay off bigger. Yeah, it just comes down to execution, too. Did a nice job out in the field, stalled a little bit once they got down to the goal line, so they just need to be a little bit more crisp here. Yeah, and listen, I think the first part was the most important part. You've got to put the drive together first to get down there. Now, when we get down there, focus on execution and getting six points. A nice job by the defense there, tackling the catch and smothering the tight end. They know this offense is going to try to find him in the passing game in a lot of different situations. That time, perfect coverage, and nice job bringing the big guy down. Not easy to do. And he scoops his way to the first down and then slides to avoid the hit. And the Aggies come to the line with a new set of downs. Oh, it's just so frustrating on a defense. I mean, you got... You got great initial coverage. You understand third and short. The ball might come out fast. And then what does the quarterback do? Scrambles around, buys time, gets the first down pretty easily. Now you got a new fresh set of downs, a new fresh set of problems. Back to throw. It's Wegman. He almost picked up the first down on that one, but he'll be just a little bit short. And they were able to get the ball to the running back in space, but that space just evaporated. And a great job by the defense, man. It's tough to get those guys on the ground. They're so used to being having the football as running backs and making plays and being dynamic. So usually one guy not going to get him to the ground. You want many guys swarming to the football trying to get that elusive guy on the ground. Texas A&M going quickly. We didn't have to work very hard on that one. There was nobody in sight as he rips off a massive run. Sort of a going for it all. And it's incomplete. It was wild high and wide on that one. Yeah, I think you know the situation as a defender, and you know you're up by a score, and you know exactly what's going on with the offense. They got to make
make some big plays here in the fourth quarter. Nice job playing the deep ball, staying deep, and not giving up the big throw. Just too much heat that time, and they knock him down at the 31. These fans stepping up to help this defense on third down. Looking downfield, and he needs fires toward the end zone. And that pass picked off. And the senior just snatched the ball out of the air and gave it back to his offense. Nice job by this defense. That might be the exclamation point. Fourth quarter, I got a lead. You bring on the nickel defense. You know they're passing the football for plays just like that to make the INT and almost put this one away. Florida has the ball back, and here comes the offense. Line gets set, first down. They'll run the option. Not much working there. It'll be second and nine. And this defense has got to make a play, right? It's the fourth quarter. We're trailing. You know this offense, they're going to get concerned, and they want to eat that clock. You've got to bring more guys to the line of scrimmage. You've got to make plays. You've got to get that football back. Try to get the edge with a quick touch pass. And they wrap him up, but not before he's got enough for the first down. Hard-earned yards, man. You got to get these first downs any way you can. Sometimes it's not going to be easy, and you can't just do it conventionally handing it off. This offense is going to have to be creative. Football is a game of inches, and you just got to find the angles to give yourself an advantage. That creative play call right there really helped them out. It'll be first and 10 from the 30. He wants to throw. He lobs one high down the left side. And that one falls incomplete. They tried to go over the top on first down. Second down coming up. Couldn't make the connection last time. Let's see if they throw it again. Looking to throw. It's Mertz. Going back to the well. Another deep ball. And they can't hook up. Going for the big play on second down. Now it's third down. They line up, and it is a long way to the sticks from here. He'll take another shot here. He's got it inside the 25. Touchdown, Gator! He broke away from the defense, and they couldn't catch him. They tackle a little more onto this lead, and they're on their way to a 3-0 start. And, you know, late in the games, offenses sometimes get conservative when they got the lead and they got the ball. I love this offense. They were aggressive. They got another score added to the lead. Now you're trying to salt this game away. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And that extra point is a big one as they now have a three-possession, 17-point lead in the fourth. Lining up to cover the kick after that touchdown drive. He'll take the return and try to improve the field position. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. Texas A&M has it back in the offense, ready to go to work. This offense has pretty much been stuck in the mud the entire game. It's been a frustrating performance, Jesse. Yeah, and listen, you can't be hanging your head just yet. This game's not over. This coaching staff is still evaluating their players. So if you're on the field right now, you've got to finish this game. You've got to try to prove something to them. Well, the game is over, to be clear. They're not coming back. But I hear what you're saying. Keep fighting. Keep showing your coaches it matters. And maybe find something positive here late that you can build on for the weeks to come. Fires to the big fella. How about this backer in pass coverage and bringing the big hit stick with him, too? The aerial assault continues. Catch in the middle, it's Smith. And they knock him down, but he got past the line to gain. Clock is still running, and they have to get everybody lined up. He'll come out throwing on first down. And this will be incomplete. A big hit there forces second down. Couldn't make the connection last time. Let's see if they throw it again. On the move, it's Wegman. And that's going to be incomplete. A lot of contact on the play, but no flags. It'll be third down. If they can convert here, that's... 
that type of play can really give you a shot of momentum. Trying to move the sticks on third down through the air. And he'll chuck it into the cheap seats there and save the down. Nobody getting open there. At this point in the game in the fourth quarter, it is going to be tough for this offense to get some completions here because now, trailing by this much, the defense is expecting pass, and they're putting a whole bunch of extra DBs on the field to help them out in coverage. And he's picked off again. His night vision hasn't been up to speed. His third interception. Still on his feet. And after the pick, everybody going the other way, and he crossed midfield and got it to the 47. And that's a really good job by the defense, understanding the situation of football. It's fourth down. It's late in the game. You've got a multi-possession lead. Take away all the deep stuff. Make them force the football into coverage. They do, and they stamp this game. The Gators sending the offense back to work. Now the chance to take a knee and just put the finishing touches on this victory. Yeah, and this offense has done their job, man. They've been so productive, built the lead. Listen, their defense has pulled their weight as well. But Nothing but green ahead. He was loose and setting sail, and they stop him at the six-yard line. I love this type of play because it looks like a jet sweep. The defense, they're a bit confused pre-snap. They don't know who has the ball, and all of a sudden, that guy with his speed is in the second level of the defense before the defense even knows what happened. Ready, Running out the clock, a mere formality between them and a victory as we have victory formation coming. And the quarterback takes a knee. Well, how about this one? A fun one. These guys came in as underdogs, and they walk out as the winner. They didn't care they were unranked. That's not what they were worried about. All oh, this team's ranked. They weren't looking at any different. They were looking to come in and get the W and execute. Great job believing they could come, Jesse, and knock them off. Yeah, you're right, David. This team came in with something to prove, and they knew they had a national audience that was going to be paying attention to this game. What a great job going out under the lights, big-time stage against a ranked opponent, really putting their A game out there on the field. That's going to do it for us. For Jesse Palmer, David Pollock, our entire broadcast team, I'm Reese Davis. This has been another presentation of EA Sports College Football.